Hi there, Hesse Bula. So another set of essays from you. Great to see you working so hard. So let's take a look at what you wrote. Um, this is the one about local food and if it's better for the environment and economy. Uh, let's see what you said. It has been empirically proved that that industrial and agricultural income has a significant positive impact on economic growth of a nation. Okay, obviously you had an extra that there. Some people believe that in order to flourish economically, citizens should consume local food produced by local companies. I completely agree. All right, here you needed some sort of a linker um, and would have been sufficient, okay? But you did need to put something there. This essay will discuss how local commodities lead to economic prosperity using examples from the Indian government and World Bank to demonstrate points, okay? Um, your introduction focuses just on the economy. It doesn't say anything about environment. So that's a little concerning. Um, it basically it raises a red flag that maybe you are not going to develop the um, aspect of the environment at all. Um, but even if you do, you should address it in your introduction. Okay? So... That's what you said. To start with, there exists ample of evidence. Or we don't say there exists. We say there is ample evidence that consumption of domestic goods alleviates, you didn't put an S here, although you should have, um, alleviates the unemployment rate. This is largely because the more local products are used, the demand for it let's fix this. The This is largely because the more local products are used, the more demand for it will escalate and the firms will hire more employees to increase the level of production el to fulfill aggregate demand i don't know what you mean by aggregate demand there but okay maybe it means something different in addition to this purchasing local food will increase government's revenue if we buy eatables which are produced by local farmer the net income of these farmers will rise hence it will pay more taxes to the authorities for instance in 2001 a law passed by the indian government according to which import of eatables were banned uh no let's try it again so for instance 2001 a law was passed by the indian government according to which import of eatables were banned and this initiative increased India's GDP growth rate by 12.4%. Okay, fine. Um, so you're in favor of eating local goods because of what it does to the economy. Fine. So, moreover, using our own farmers' products, you should have had an apostrophe after that S, leads to infrastructure development and high standard of living. This is due to the fact that we will indirectly support our national firms. Thus, an increase in number of companies will lead to construction of commercial buildings, roads, bridges, and railways. For example, uh, a recent study by World Banks indicates that imports are the main source of cash outflow for a nation. Thus, it is possible to see beyond doubt that a nation with a, here, a huge amount of money would have a higher standard of living. Okay, so let's look at your conclusion and then we'll talk about this, okay? Uh, huh, huh. Okay, from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that we should purchase local food items instead of imported products. By doing so, the unemployment rate will drop, government will generate higher revenue, leading, ing, to higher living standard, to a higher living standard, and uh, an escalation of GDP growth or um, an increase in GDP growth. Um, okay, so um, it was good in terms of your vocabulary, your grammar. You extended your arguments. All of that was well done. Uh, cohesive, coherent. So. As far as uh, three of the criteria are concerned, it was fine. However, there is a problem that we absolutely need to address, and it's what I said at the very beginning. I told you in your introduction that I was worried you might not say anything about the environment, and in fact, that's exactly what you did. You didn't say anything about it, and it's funny because you even highlighted it. So, um, it's uh, it's it's just not appropriately developed. You've only covered 
part of the topic. And so that's absolutely going to cost you in terms of task achievement. Um, so let's look at what I'm talking about here. Take a look at this. These are the band descriptors, the public band descriptors for task two. Okay. And here, look what we have. So band five says addresses the task only partially. Okay. So when you miss half of what it's talking about, that's considered partially, basically. I mean, you only covered the economical aspects of local food, and you didn't even mention environment at all, not even as a, a concept. So you can see where that's going to put you in terms of your score for task achievement. Um, so it's it's a problem, okay? Uh, you And it's it seems interesting to me because you were aware of it. So I don't know what happened, but it's something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at your second essay. Okay, here we have the letter to Albion, so let's see what happened here. Dear Sir, Madam, with reference to your letter dated this, oh, comma here, not full stop, I'm ready to apologize regarding my inability to not submit the test. You either sit a test, or if you're American, you take a test, uh, but not submitting the test, okay? Uh, on the 25th of March, fine. This is Hasibula Yakubi studying BSc Business Finance at the School of Economics and Finance. Okay, a little awkward this is. I mean, that's how we, you know, talk on the phone, but in a letter we don't really write like that. So, um, how else could you have said it? You could have said, uh, my name is Hasibula Yakubi studying Business Finance at the School of Economics and Finance. And my student number is this. Please accept my apology uh, for being absent and not sitting the test. The main reason behind my absence was that I broke my hand during an intramural school basketball match a day prior to the test. Although the coach was aware of the incident and he promised that he would discuss the matter with the examination department, I believe he forgot to do so. Or I believe he must have forgotten to do so. Um, moreover, I have got a medical certificate from my general practitioner and here I have enclosed it with this letter which would prove my claim. I am kindly requesting you to give me a second chance to do the exam in the upcoming week and at the same time I would be grateful if you could please arrange for a writer as I have severe pain in my hand and would not be able to complete the test in its best possible manner. I'm looking forward to receiving ING here, your confirmation. Please do not hesitate to contact me should you require further information. Yours sincerely. Okay, so um, let's see what you did here. Did you apologize? Yes, you did. Did you identify yourself? Yes, you did. Um, did you give an explanation with evidence? Yeah, you did. So let's talk about what you didn't do. You didn't give possible resolutions. In fact, you only gave one resolution, but clearly the essay wants more than one because they have this S here. So it's not one resolution that you have to give. You have to give other suggestions on how you can rectify the situation. Um, so that's going to cost you again in terms of task achievement. Uh, another problem is with this. I wanted a capital here, but not only that, since you don't know the name of the person you're writing to, you can't finish your letter with yours sincerely. It should be yours faithfully. It's one of the conventions of letter writing, and so examiners will look at that kind of thing to make sure that you are following these conventions, being appropriately formal, um, in this sort of instance at least, and so forth. Okay, so it's fine. It's got some nice elements. There are some, uh, definitely some good parts to this, but there were some areas that needed a little work. Okay, uh, like I said in your task two, what I really want you to focus on is your task achievement. Really, really, really pay attention to those questions, the prompts, the way they are asked. Um, and it, I always say that it's definitely worth spending a couple of minutes just reading it, make sure nothing has slipped your attention. Okay, so go ahead and correct these, return them back to us, and let's see what you write in your next set. Good luck.